May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. August 29, 2024 Memorial of the Passion of St. John the Baptist A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called as an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Sosthenes, a brother, to the church of God which is at Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all who are invoking the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in every place of theirs and of ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God continuously for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. By that grace, in all things, you have become wealthy in him, in every word and in all knowledge. And so, the testimony of Christ has been strengthened in you. In this way, nothing is lacking to you in any grace, as you await the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he, too, will strengthen you, even until the end, without guilt, until the day of the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. Through him, you have been called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, I will praise your name forever, Lord. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever, yes, forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness has no end. I will praise your name forever, Lord. Generation after generation shall praise your works, and they shall declare your power. They shall speak of the magnificence of the glory of your holiness, and shall tell of your wondrous works. I will praise your name forever, Lord. They shall speak of the might of your terrible acts, and shall declare your greatness. They shall publish the memory of the abundance of your sweetness, and shall rejoice in your justice. I will praise your name forever, Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. For Herod himself had sent to capture John, and had chained him in prison, because of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, for he had married her. For John was saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Now Herodias was devising treachery against him, and she wanted to kill him, but she was unable. For Herod was apprehensive of John, knowing him to be a just and holy man, and so he guarded him. And he heard that he was accomplishing many things, and so he listened to him willingly. And when an opportune time had arrived, Herod held a feast on his birthday, with the leaders, and the tribunes, and the first rulers of Galilee. And when the daughter of the same Herodias had entered, and danced, and pleased Herod, along with those who were at table with him, the king said to the girl, Request from me whatever you want, and I will give it to you. And he swore to her, Anything that you request, I will give to you, even up to half my kingdom. And when she had gone out, she said to her mother, What shall I request? But her mother said, The head of John the Baptist. And immediately, when she had entered with haste to the king, she petitioned him, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was greatly saddened. But because of his oath, and because of those who were sitting with him at table, he was not willing to disappoint her. So, having sent an executioner, he instructed that his head be brought on a platter. And he beheaded him in prison, and he brought his head on a platter. And he gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body, and they placed it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord
Reflection How can you embrace your personal challenges and injustices with the same courage and faith shown by John the Baptist and Jesus? Herod was the one who had John the Baptist arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him but was unable to do so. Mark 6 verses 17 to 19 The suffering and death of St. John the Baptist greatly parallel the suffering and death of Jesus. They were cousins. John was one of the first to acknowledge the divine presence of our Lord when he leaped for joy in the womb of his mother during the visitation of Mary to Elizabeth. John lived a holy and simple life, embracing his mission to prepare the way for the Lord. He was the last and greatest of the Old Testament prophets. Of him, Jesus said that there was no one born of a woman who was greater than John. For these reasons, we should not be the least bit surprised that John's suffering and death paralleled and prefigured the death of the Savior of the world. Herod was fearful of John, believing him to be a holy man of God. He imprisoned him with a certain regret, knowing that he was innocent. Similarly, before Pilate condemned Jesus to death, he found him not guilty of any crime. Pilate knew Jesus was innocent, but allowed fear to direct his choice to condemn our Lord. John was ultimately killed because of the hatred and plotting of Herodias, the unlawful wife of Herod. It was Herodias' anger that became a weapon, forcing Herod to put John to death. Similarly, it was the jealousy and anger of the religious leaders at that time that instigated and drove the death of Jesus. Pilate, like Herod, was at first unwilling to condemn our Lord. But the relentless hatred of the scribes and Pharisees compelled Pilate to condemn Jesus, just as it was Herodias' hatred that compelled Herod to kill John. After John's death, some of his disciples came to carry his body away for burial. This was permitted by Herod, perhaps because of his feelings of guilt. So also with our Lord, Pilate permitted some disciples and the holy women to carry Jesus' dead body to the tomb for burial. In the end, the good fruit of Jesus' death infinitely overshadowed the crime that was committed against him. So also with John. We can be certain that, as a martyr, the blood he shed as a witness to Christ bore spiritual fruit that surpassed all he had done in his public ministry. Each of us is called to imitate our Lord, and therefore, should also take inspiration from St. John the Baptist. They both were innocent, but suffered greatly. They both spoke the truth, despite the hatred of some. They both gave their lives, in accord with the Father's plan. Jesus was John's Saviour, John was but a precursor and servant of our Lord. Reflect today upon the invitation God has given to you to imitate the life of John the Baptist by uniting yourself to his Lord. The first form of imitation will take place when you commit yourself to the proclamation of the truth in accord with your mission. What mission has God given to you? How is he calling you to proclaim the gospel with courage, strength, determination, and fidelity to the end? Reflect also upon the injustice inflicted first upon John and then upon our Lord. As you do, try to look at any injustice you have received in life in the light of John's and Jesus' lives. They did not run away from injustice. They embraced it as a sacrifice and offered it to the Father in heaven. Jesus' sacrifice brought forth the salvation of the world, John's was but a sharing in that glorious offering. Make your offering with them, and do not hesitate to do so with deep love and trust in the Father's plan. Let us pray. Most glorious Lord, you invited St. John the Baptist 
to prepare the way for your coming and your death. He gave his life as a martyr, and this sacrifice bore an abundance of good fruit. Please give me the grace to walk in his footsteps, by faithfully fulfilling my mission in life, with courage and strength. May I never waver in the face of injustice, so that I can embrace it, and make it my spiritual offering to you. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.